You can actually see the two scars. This patient had come with hypercalcemia. While the diagnosis of spasm of breast was made, so she had a parathyroid adenoma right side, inferior parathyroid adenoma, along with carcinoma breast. And I operated on her three years ago, till the COVID time. Right, Karan? Yes, sir. So in the same sitting we did, right parathyroidectomy and the right sided modified medical mastectomy. Now three years follow up. We we'll, we we'll, we we'll, we got to be extremely careful with them because the patient is on tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitor depending upon menopausal status. What is for what tamoxifen for pre menopausal and aromatase inhibitors for post menopausal because post menopausal ovaries are atrophic now so we peripheral conversion peripheral conversion therefore we use aromatase inhibitors because aromatase enzyme is responsible for the peripheral conversion. Same time, hyperparathyroidism due to parathyroid adenoma was causing some bone related disorders, brown tumors, etc., which have recovered now. But you need to keep a balance. Tamoxifen does what to bones? It's good or bad for bones? Bad. Bad. So that's what understanding is. Tamoxifen causes excessive deposition of calcium in the bone. Aromatase inhibitors produce osteoporosis. Tamoxifen does not. In fact, in a way, I can say it benefits the bones. And I had let it off in the question itself. It's a silly question because for an MCQ expert, this would be, oh, obviously when he's asking, it has to be good, otherwise bad to common sense. Eh? <laughs> this is how you are taught, no, how to answer, select how, this is not likely, this is likely. Someone with a good night. So pathological fractures, osteoporosis is common with aromatic inhibitors, which is post menopause. Tamoxifen causes, tamoxifen causes bone. And in hyperparathyroidism, initially there is osteoporosis because calcium is stolen. But once the parathyroid adenoma is removed, there is something called as hungry bone syndrome. The bones start claiming the calcium back. And the patient may have hypocalcemia initially, but it gets corrected. So it's a treatable hyperparathyroidism. So both need to be followed up. You can see the hair. She has received chemotherapy also. And now she is completely disease free and almost symptom free. And she's come on a routine follow up. Follow up for a patient with breast cancer or any cancer or anything, any disease is so important. One, for the sake of patient and also for the sake of the clinician. Because you should audit your work and that's the only way you can audit. What did I do and what happened to my patients? Did it help my patient or did it not? Okay. So she has done well. She is continuing with her exercises. I advise her to reduce weight. Why is obesity a risk for breast cancer? Because of the extra the peripheral conversion happens in the adipose tissue. You can be louder. So the peripheral conversion happens in the adipose tissue. Excellent. So obesity is a risk factor because the conversion is more, so they get more estrogen. And usually it's estrogen based cancer. She had ERPR positive, but HER, ERPR positive, HER2 negative, the lumen LA type of cancer, but KI67 was more than 14%, so she got chemotherapy, but she also got hormone therapy, and she is on aromatase inhibitors. So we need to, with aromatase inhibitors, hyperparathyroidism treated, we need to balance it out. Clear? Yes. Any questions? No, sir. Okay, Ava? Yes, it's a little bit of a 